Hello everyone and welcome to part number three in my BMS design series. Now, in part number one, we looked at our power requirements, what it will take to run uh, all of these power tools from a lithium-based battery pack. And we got our load profiles in order to design our BMS with. And then in part number two, we looked at what kind of cell will handle that load profile. And we decided on a Molly P26A cell. We also looked at our cell configuration and how it's going to be glued together and weld together in order to fit into our plastics. In today's video, we'll be looking at choosing a BMS or a battery management system chipset uh, that will be the controller slash safety circuit uh, for our battery pack. Now, my hope with today's video is to hopefully put a little spark and to rekindle that fire that I've been missing in my life. Woo, we got some fire. So let's get started with today's video. Today's video is brought to you by Pro Technologies. Contact them at www.protechnologies.com or sales at protechnologies.com for all of your custom battery needs. Now, what is a BMS or a battery management system? Well, it's just that, a system designed to manage the battery pack. Now, a BMS's job is to monitor the voltage of the pack, current both in charge and discharge, and the temperature of the pack to ensure its maximum safety during operation. Uh, now, a BMS will normally sit between the cell stack and your device to make sure in case there is any safety event um, in the cell stack or in the device that the BMS will isolate one from the other uh, to make sure that nothing catastrophic happens. Now there are several types of BMS chipsets and we're going to be looking at the three most popular today and deciding on which one we need for our application, hopefully giving you insight on which one that you will need in your application. Now the first type of chipset we will be looking at is a smart battery chipset, sometimes called a fuel gauge. However, that's not the quite right term for that because you can get fuel gauges that are just that fuel gauges that monitor the, the pack current and the pack voltage and can give you uh, an output of the capacity uh, then they don't have any safety features. So this is a smart battery chipset with fuel gauging included into that. So uh, let's look at all the features of a smart uh, battery gauge. Now I've worked with these gauges for years. I think my first design uh, was way back in 2017 or 18. And so uh, all the years I've worked with these chipsets and I have notes. I don't remember everything about these chipsets. I don't remember all the features and all those things or everything about every single type. And you don't have to either. That's what data sheets and notes are for. So let's go through these notes and look and see exactly what these different type of chipsets can do, starting with the smart battery chipset. Now, this chipset is normally um, set apart because it has a communications interface. So either I squared C or S and bus normally, sometimes SPI, uh, you can communicate with the BMS, read current, read voltage, read temperature, uh, all externally from a microcontroller or whatever your system is. However, these chipsets are made to stand alone. So you program all the settings that you want into them and they will stand alone. And most settings are programmable. So all of your voltage cell settings, your uh, main pack voltage settings, and then your individual cell settings uh, for all the safety are fully programmable. Uh, normally all of your current settings, your overcurrent discharge, your overcurrent in charge, all of those things are fully programmable along with all of your temperature settings. And so these chipsets are very, very feature rich. They also include fuel gauging, either impedance tracking, which actually uh, looks at the capacity of each cell and tracks what its impedance is over time and can give you a really good um, accurate reading of what its capacity is, or coulomb counting, which is not as accurate, but still gives you a pretty good idea of how much capacity is left uh, in the cell stack. Now, these do not require a microcontroller to operate. Again, they are standalone. You program them, 
and then they will stand alone by themselves and monitor the battery pack and then you can read the registers in them with a microcontroller to figure out what the status of your battery is and then there is some control you can do externally as well to the battery monitor. Now, uh, there are a few downsides with this chipset. The first one is price. These are a lot more expensive than the uh, other options, but they are standalone, all in one. They are uh, the most feature rich. They, they do the most out of the other options that we're going to look at. Now, they are complicated to set up. Uh, we use a lot of uh, TI chipsets here at PTI, and they have what's called a golden file. And they have hundreds of settings that you have to go through and set um, in order to set up what's called the golden file, which is the, the firmware for uh, the chipset. And then that leads to uh, another cost when you're producing them uh, because the board house now has to program this and calibrate uh, this chipset. But it does provide a whole lot better of a battery pack, a whole lot more sophisticated of a battery pack when you use a smart battery chipset. Now the second type of chipset we will be looking at is an AFE or an analog front end. Now just like the smart battery chipsets, these have a communications interface, I squared C or S and bus, and they have fully programmable settings, voltage, current, and temperature, just like the smart batteries do, except they are reliant on an external microcontroller. So AFE are used for system, normally system-based uh, BMSs instead of standalone BMSs. Now, uh, there are a few types of analog front ends. Some of them have some autonomy. So uh, they can sense the voltage and then react to a safety vent and trip the FETs or release the relay or release the contactor on the output, whereas some of them are just pure monitors and report that back to the microcontroller. And then the microcontroller has to make the decision of what to do during a safety event. Now, uh, no uh, analog front ends offer any kind of fuel gauging. That is something that you'll have to implement on your system itself. So uh, the, the analog front ends, if you're not going to make a custom system, a fully customized BMS where you have a microcontroller that does all the BMS functions, uh, that can be a, a really big downside uh, to the uh, AFE since they really cannot stand alone uh, and have full autonomy. Uh, also, if you don't have any experience programming microcontroller or doing those kind of things, an AFE really isn't the best thing to put into your BMS. But again, if you want to develop your own system, uh, especially if you want to have CAN bus communications, if you want to have full control of all the battery and you want it to integrate with the rest of your product, then an AFME, AFE might be the thing that you need to look into. Again, it's all about your use case. And finally, the third type of chipset we will be looking at is a non-smart or a battery protection chipset. Now this chipset offers no communications. It has no firmware that can be programmed. All of your voltage, current, and temperature settings are hardware set inside of the chipset and cannot be changed. Uh, also, there is no fuel gauging. This chipset is made to be fully autonomous, to fully stand alone with no external influences and to just protect the battery pack. That is all it is designed for. Now, when picking one of these chips, it's a little different than the other two. Uh, the other two, you pick the chipset and then you program it to your battery pack. With this type of chipset, you have your battery pack and then you pick the chipset to match. So for our application, we'll be using a non-smart BMS chip because that battery pack has no way to communicate. It has no outputs for communication and it also does not have any kind of display for fuel gauging. So for this application, the best chipset to pick will be a non-smart BMS chip. Now, when you go to pick one of these chipsets, um, you have to pick a series and then a skew of that chipset. So if we look at the data sheet for the BQ77915, which is the chip that we will be using in this application, we see uh, the data sheet like normal, but if you scroll down through the data sheet, you'll see a table. And the table has several skews of the same chip on that table. So in these chips, your voltage trip points, your current sense points, and then your temperature trip points are all hardware set and you pick the one you need from the table. 
So if we take a look here at the voltage trip points, you can see there are several, several options for um, your different voltage trip points. If you go over to your overcurrent uh, in discharge trip point, you see there are several millivolt trip points to pick from, and then you pair your current sense resistor with that millivolt trip point in order to get your current trip point that you need. And then if you look at your temperature trip points, also there are many different SKUs to pick from. So what you do is you look at the SKUs that are available and you pick one that will fit your application. Also in these situations, if you want to have a um, or you have the ability to buy a certain quantity, whatever the minimum order quantity is, more than likely companies like Texas Instruments will make you your own SKU of this series of chipset as long as you're willing to buy a certain amount of product. So uh, this is very useful if your battery pack just needs to be a normal battery pack, does not need to communicate with a system, does not have to be part of a system, but is merely just a, a normal battery pack like a drill pack that has no need but to be charged and discharged and be safe. So that is the chipset that we will be picking for this application. Hello everyone, Future Alex here sitting behind his computer screen editing this video and I realized as I was editing this video that I should have made it into two parts. Whenever I was recording it, I recorded it in one session uh, as one whole video, but it's becoming a little too long. Uh, I have a short attention span being a millennial, so any video over 10 minutes just gives me anxiety. And so uh, I normally like to keep my videos to 10 minutes. So that's what I'm going to do with this and split it into two 10 to 15 minute videos instead of one 30 minute video. So this first part will be explaining the types of BMS chipsets. And then in next time's video, we will go into uh, what safety features you need to look for when picking a chipset. So thank you so much for watching today's video. Make sure you subscribe uh, so you can catch part number two of picking a chipset. Uh, remember to like and to share the video. The channel's really growing. I really appreciate everyone uh, who has been watching the videos. And thank you so much for watching today's video. Don't forget to follow me on LinkedIn. That link is in the description. Again, a special thank you to Pro Technologies for sponsoring today's video. And I will see everyone in the next video.